Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Happy New Year! 2021 is looking like an interesting year already, from the mutation of the infamous COVID-19 virus to a mob breaking into the Capitol Hill in the United States and taking siege for four hours. But let's leave Sokoto, like we say in local parlance, and come back to Sokoto. In other words, let's return home. I'll be kicking things off talking about the one too many demolitions in Lagos. Chuka will be taking on the paternity controversy, which has gone viral in Nigeria for, for days now. Jumoke, often accused of being a whaler herself, is taking us through the fine art of whaling. And she'll be talking about the president's New Year speech. Evans will be asking the hard question about preparing a will. Why do we wait till the point of death before we do that? And lastly, Bolahon advocates for us to be responsible, especially in the light of the second wave of the pandemic. We'll be back in a moment. I'll be talking about Monkey Village, one demolition too many. Sometime in November 2019, the story of a girl who was refused the issuance of international passport by the immigration office in Ikoyi went viral. The teenage girl missed an opportunity to represent Nigeria as a guest of the United Nations and Amnesty International at an international children's conference in Geneva. Her name is Aisha. Aisha lived in Monkey Village until the 31st of December 2020 when it was demolished. Monkey Village, an urban slum in the same neighborhood with Okwebi and Ikeja suburb was demolished without prior notice to the residents. The Lagos State Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development has since taken responsibility for the demolition, claiming that it was to reclaim wetland. Reclamation of wetland, they say. In reality, Monkey Village occupied 10 plots of land belonging to seven individuals who gave out the land to the residents pending when they are ready to develop the place. Clearly, the residents were not illegal occupants. Moro Nrotsi Ashabi is the Ashuju Asha Udua. She runs Helping Hands, one of the charitable organizations working there with food and medical supplies as well as Medicare. The organization raised money to treat Taiwan Kende Koka and nurse them into good health. Betty Abba runs Sea Hope Foundation, another organization in Monkey Village that supports about 200 children in the community with education and personal development. It's ICT center where it teaches computer literacy and a borehole for the community now lie in ruins. Shelter is one of the fundamental necessities of life. The others are food and clothing. And the court says, Everyone, rich or poor, deserves a shelter for the soul. Given this fact, three things are worth noting in the matter. That residents of Monkey Village were not given prior notice before the demolition, that they were not allowed to save any of their belongings, and that Lagos State has a pattern with destroying urban slums that borders on feeding the very source of criminality in the city that needs to be checked. General comment number four, the United Nations Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights states that the human right to adequate housing is the right of every woman, man, youth and child to gain and sustain a safe and secure home and community in which to live in peace and dignity. Now, governance is a collective. 
the executive, the judiciary, and the legislative arms of government exist in Nigeria. I therefore advocate that the legislative arm of government in Lagos State institute hearings into the incident, especially that there are additional allegations of land grabbing associated with the demolition. As we speak, 400 people are now homeless and destitute. We remember Morocco, Makoko, Badia East, Ilubiri, and recently Otodogbame, and now Monkey Village. The Lagos State House of Assembly must not let this be a recurring decimal in Lagos. No one, no matter the status, should leave home and return to its rubbles. It is inhuman, mean, and oppressive. I remember the Otodogbame one um, very, very clearly, and how the Lagos State government under Governor Ambody at the time, you know, defended themselves. They didn't want our waterways to be full with hoodlums. They also mentioned at the time that they'd given them um, notice, but the residents never moved anywhere. And I said that as much as I agree, at the time that you, you do not want um, as many as 100 slums as we have in Lagos, in fact, 100 and counting, you know, you also want to ensure that you don't push these people into crime right. and that you don't render them homeless to the extent that they have no choice you know, than to go into crime. If you give them notices and they remo re refuse to move because a lot of them are fishermen who have just migrated you know, from one slum to the other through Badagri, you know, through the waterways of Lagos, then you want to maybe create some sort of alternative for them to go to. If not, you just don't come at that time with Otodogbame, come with guns in the middle of the night on a Sunday night, you know, and then just chase them out. You know, so I agree with you. This is a recurring decimal in Lagos State. Unfortunately, the Lagos State um, legislature is, in my own opinion, a rubber stamp. They are in the same political party with the government at all times, and um, I, I usually call them twenty over twenty. Yeah, <laughs> as in they always win, you know, during the elections, and they never do anything against their party. The Ministry of, um, you know, Physical Planning must have a resettlement plan because we have we have this issue where people have habited in a place for so long. I learned that uh, they also went to uh, Snake Village. This Snake Village, they call it um, Snake Island. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, the other time also to make some uh, destruction of uh, properties and all that. I'm thinking here that the Lagos State government, you know, when you say Lagos is the center of excellency, you expect that the government should have developed capacity in every area of their administrative life. So they should have a, a resettlement plan. If you don't want a community to exist because you have reasons that uh, they could have beat hoodlums or block waterways and all that, this is the same waterways that you're not even utilizing. You are not <laughs> using, you are not utilizing for transport, but then you don't want people there. Uh, fine, you don't want them there. Okay, create an alternative location for them. So that they can be there while you develop whatever you want. That's, but this, this attitude of just busting into the place and say we gave them notice they did not hear and start to destroy mm -hmm. things and all that is is it's a no no for me. Right. Typically, no. when you say you give people notice, let's assume there was notice. Most likely, there will have been notice anyway. There was no notice. Now, when you give people notice to move, there that presumes that there's a place to move to. Exactly. Yes. So where there are no places to move to. That notice is mute. People, it, it has no effect. They will just, they will just be there, True. essentially. True. Now, Monkey Village, um, that name Monkey, the, the was, not, was not arbitrary. There were monkeys there mm. in that place. Ordinarily, in a sane environment, that place should not be built. It's not for human habitation. It should be preserved mm. and allow those monkeys to just be there. To so be their natural habitat. Yes, that is not our own case. I remember several, this is more than uh, almost two decades ago now, um, so when somebody had brought a project. At that axis, for me, I was in banking then. The reason we could not do that project then was because it was said to be a green belt. That thing was meant to actually be preserved. Mm. 
I was surprised one day when I went around that Oregon side, and part of what they said was meant to be preserved has been built up. Now, that portion that is built up was built up most likely by people that are bigger. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I, so when the small people now do the <laughs> same thing, they don't get the same treatment. That is one of the problems. Let's take Chuka. Mm. They don't get yeah. the same treatment. Chuka. I agree. Yes, I agree with Bona. Um, and, and in fact, everybody, actually, I, I like all the comments so far. And um, the thing is that town planners in Nigeria are a disgrace to Nigeria. They don't know anything. And I want <laughs> any of them who wants to contest this, my statement with me to do it anywhere, I will come and meet them. They are a disgrace to this country. That's why we have problems like this. And that's why they are able to give government the audacity to go around and harass people and kill them and get them out of where they live with nowhere to go to. You should have somewhere for them to go to before you tell them where to go. Who would have arranged somewhere for them to go to? Who would have found a place for them if it's not the hopeless town planners that we have in this country? That's what the problem is. Town planning and urbanism is a huge problem in this country. And, and all they do is just go around addressing themselves as town planner Peter Smith instead of <laughs> Mr. Peter Smith. Meanwhile, they do nothing. That's what the problem is. The, pr okay. the problem with tit so, titles, um, Shmokeyos will be the last two, Yes, comment. two things quickly. Um, in defense of Lagos State Government, usually they say that they are unable to deal with the um, population explosion in Lagos. Millions of people trooping into Lagos, overstretching the facilities. Well, that is Lagos for you, and um, it's a Nigerian problem. We need to deal with it. But um, there's a joke about these monkeys, because they come within the estates <laughs> next door, and they'll carry your pot of soup. From fire, so now I know why. It's because we are the ones inhabiting their space. We are the ones inhabiting their space. And, there are, and those, people, their space. those people who invented their space have argued that human beings have not seen space to live. <laughs> you you are used to live the monkeys there. walk. The monkeys everywhere. are protesting, and that is what we are having. Right. After the break, Evans will be telling us what the rabbi taught him this week. Stay with us. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. While it is the expectation of every man to achieve longevity, life runs on the principle of time and seasons. There is a time to be born and then a time to die. You cannot plan how you will be born, to whom or where, but you can plan how you want your affairs conducted after your demise through the instrumentality of a will. So I speak on why you should write a will now. A will is a written statement that ensures that the property of a person is devolved on his heirs according to the express wishes and directive. This makes a will very important as it is a document that speaks after the death of a testator. A will may deal with not only real property, but also with personal and movable properties. The following are the importance of a will. A will helps a person to determine what happens to his property after his death. It helps give any instruction he may wish to carry out if he is no longer alive. A will is a creation of statutes. A will is sacrosanct because the wishes of the testator in the will are his last wishes and testament, which applies 
to his declared estates. Where no will is written, it creates problem of intestacy and the estate of the disease will be governed by the rules of intestacy, i.e. customary law. Uh, for example, persons whom the disease may not wish to benefit from his estate may gain from it, while those whom he may desire to benefit from the estate may be deprived. It will give the testator the opportunity to appoint personal representative, that is, executors, to administer his estate. By this, he can choose persons whom he trusts and who have his interests at heart to carry out his wishes after his demise. This contrasts with a situation where he dies in testate and the court or some other persons may have to appoint administrators uh, for his estate without the disease having any choice in their appointment. It will save time and money. This is because the personal representative derives their authority from the will and begins to act immediately. Where the disease dies in testate, administrators will have to apply and wait for letters of administration to be issued by the state before they can begin to act. The grant of a letter of administration is expensive because the state takes 10% of the estate and cash. And where an administrator acts on the estate without a grant of a profit, this action may be set aside. Where there is a will, the state cannot take out of the estate of the disease. A will gives the testator peace of mind because he has wound up his affairs and can expect his wish to be carried out after he is no more. A will is not for the rich, but for everyone. And it does not matter how poor or rich you are. It is important to have a will to protect your beneficiaries after your demise. From experience, many Nigerians feel asking them to write a will equals to wishing them dead. So they begin to bind and cast out devils in you and the, the spirit of death that you have brought as a lawyer to them. But even the holy writ they rely on to cast out evil says it is appointed unto a man to die. Write a will today. It is very, very important. Happy New Year once again. Please, I agree with writing a will. But again, in Nigeria, if you find it hard to eat and you don't have anything to give away, what are you writing a will for? But on this your advocacy, I'm going to write a will. You see, this is our money that the federal government wants to borrow. I have 2,000 naira in two different banks. <laughs> I have 10,000 too. <laughs> that, that are dormant. I want to go and write will so that the federal government cannot borrow my money. I just want to say that now. <laughs> but you know will comes into, into effect after you are, you after are your demise. <laughs> so now that you're alive, there's no escaping it. <laughs> it's ambulatory. The federal government is taking your money. <laughs> a will is ambulatory. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a very interesting topic. It um, is. There, there's a very big Nigerian lawyer then who, who died in test it. And one mm. begins to wonder, after presiding over major wills in this country, mm. he himself died in it. And the mistake sometimes is that, look, I have only one, one wife. I have uh, only two or three children. Mm. He also had one wife and four children. They fight, eh? <laughs> it was unbelievable. What? With, so, between the wife and children? Between the children. Wow. Wife, you know. Chuka. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So I, I think it's something we need to pay more attention to. Um, I've not done mine. I will. <laughs> well, Chuka, I, 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 you, you, yeah, you I think I now? am. I am. I'm not happy that Nigerians are still sort of um, behind the times. I mean, how can anyone think that if I tell him to do a will, it means that I wish him dead? Ah. He himself is. He's a, he's a dense person uh -huh. because that can the, be, the, 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 the correlation isn't there. They were, just, they were just telling you to do things, to arrange things, so that everything is clean when you're gone. You and you're your saying that I want you to die. Why are we so backward? Is what I can't understand. And, and when Evan said it, it's not as if he's telling lies. That's exactly how some people think, you know? 
Um, so yeah, I mean, of course, I agree there should be wills. Um, have you written yours? You know, Jumoke is asking. <laughs> Uh, I don't have anything, no. I'm like this long talk. You have I'm plenty. Saying, no, 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 no. Go and do it. It's another year. <laughs> do you know, the interesting, the interesting thing is that at the turn of the year, the second day of the year, I found myself thinking about writing a will. Mm. And I said to myself, okay, if I died now, who's going to inherit my TV? Hey, don't laugh. <laughs> Who is going to inherit... My Jerry's. property, my landed property, and all of that. Isn't it? Let me, let me see what I can do. My nieces, my nephews, organizations that I like, you know, that I would want to give things to. It's pretty much like when you're alive and you give gifts to people. It's mm -hmm. your final mm -hmm. gift mm -hmm. to your loved mm -hmm. ones. It, why wait till your four children kill themselves because of True. your choice property? Just True. give. I remember my mom already talking about a lot of these things. She'll call me and say, this is where my ATM is, this one, this one, that one, <laughs> this one, when I, you know, because it's inevitable. True, yeah. true. It's not something you want to bind and cast away, and it's not something you want to, to play dumb to. Um, Chuka said, people should not be dense about it. It's not about being dense, it's just the fear of death. And we must understand, especially in, the, in a pandemic like this, next day you hear this one is dead, True. that one has gone, that one has gone. So True. why not tidy things up? I'm going to do that. I'm going True. to tidy things up. True. I don't want anybody to inherit what I, I don't want you to have my thing. You don't want so to give it to I want to, be, no, I want you to, I want the right person to yeah, have my stuff. You see what, you see, talking about, um, I don't have anything. It, we should understand this thing that, even if it's a spoon you have, or a knife, you need a will to Ever. decide who will have it. Because if you die in testing, the state government will take 10%. And they whatever. will take it. They though. will take it. Yeah, it's, it's compulsory. The law. In adding By to law, they will take it. It's a form of penalty. Okay? So, but if you have a will, nobody can will search your property. In adding, in adding to that, um, I also learned from financial analysts that Writing a will sometimes open your eyes yes. to you realizing, oh, if I continue living my life like this, I can't even send my children to the university in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it broadens your horizon in terms of your finances, Planning. you know, presently. You, so, you, you know, if you need to... You suddenly realize that you don't have anything. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> maybe you need to start to earn some extra income, you know. Right. Evans. As an experienced willer, Jumoke will be talking about the fine arts of willing. Jumoke, over to you. The Nigerian president delivered a New Year's speech that many weren't interested in. I asked around, many already knew it wasn't going to be different from his past speeches. What a wahoo! I was waiting for journalists to dissect the speech. Even members of the fourth estate of the room weren't too keen. But I saw a New Year post, supposedly from presidential spokesperson Femi Adeshino, asking whalers to calm down. Finally, something interesting from the villa in 2021, even though appalling to say the least, a presidential spokesperson ought to have more decorum and finesse. But no, Mr. Adeshino doesn't. He says it just how he feels, without minding that everything he says represents his principle. Let me quote him. There is hunger, lack of jobs, and insecurity in the country. But those willers should be calming down this year and look for a new vocation. Again, what a wahoo. Am I a wailing whaler for criticizing the government that begged and cried to serve me and has just been giving me excuses in the last five years? Mr. Adeshino insists he's not asking, he's not um, against criticizing the Buhari government. He's just against whalers making it a full-time job where they criticize the railway projects, but are the first ones to take the trains and take selfies on them. Mr. Adeshino, as a former seasoned journalist, I would assume you know that a journalist who does a critique of any project or to be the first one there to investigate if things really did happen for themselves. A picture is also evidence to refer to later. Now, wow, are you a willing wheeler too? 
You know, just uh, earlier this week, I had, uh, you know, criticized Mr. Adishin or Shil Garba, and he's the third person now, uh, that it is not right to perpetually talk down on the very citizens who elected your principal to the office. There must be a way to talk to the people or talk with the people yeah. without talking down on the on people. Them. And I, I understand that some Twitter uh, soldiers took me up on that and took me to pieces. I really don't, I, it have, doesn't do anything to me. E but this is a democracy and yeah. the truth be told. Yeah. How do you, as a spokesperson, you ought to understand what relationship uh, uh, management is, mm -hmm. what reputation management is, mm -hmm. what communication, information management is as a spokesperson. You don't wake up in the, in the beginning of a year and start telling people, Willis, well, you start coming down. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know there's unemployment. Yes, you know there's insecurity. And then we should be coming down. We shouldn't be talking. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. if, when you were a, 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 an active journalist, were you not talking? Were you not writing? God you were you. A, a, a foremost columnist in this country. You know, one of the very respectable and respected ones. And then you became a spokesperson, became the, a totally different. The, uh, the attack dog, you know, against the people. It's so not right. It, it and is, I don't care what Twitter people do. It, it, is, sad. To say it is sad it. that uh, it is. Uh, a feminine additional has long thrown away the ethics of the profession, profession. of mm. journalism. Mm. Uh, he, threw, he threw it away the moment he classified us as healers and whalers. That was petty. Mm. It was misdirection, it was unprofessional and ungodly. Mm. And he has sustained that same philosophy. For five years. For, for years Isn't now. Isn't it even and a philosophy? I, 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 think, I think it is that very bad. This job, the job of the spokesperson of the presidency, comes with a lot of um, intellection, um, uh, technicality, sensitivity, and the rest of it. Especially in a country where... Uh, they have not been able to establish good governance okay. in any area. No, the thing area. is, See, just yesterday, so it, 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 just this week, you have increased the electricity tariff again. You're saying it's all fifty percent increase, but you increase it from two naira to four naira. Four naira. So what is that? I and mean, then when we talk, a Femi additional tells us we're willing. Yes. Really? It, it, when it, Ghana that, that, is giving free electricity yes, to, to citizens, ah, I'm I'm are you for real? Um, I, I think there is a new concept in that role which seems to think that um, your duty is to say things that you think your principal, principal like. I service. Like, I service. It's I a service. Nice, it has become a nice service uh, role. Yes. Not an engagement role. Which, and if you ask me, I think it should has, it should, that, that role should have some engagement component mm -hmm. in which you want to pass on honest hmm. and empathetic messages to the people. Mm -hmm. So to say, mm -hmm. I understand what you are going through. We are making effort. This to ensure, and this are what we are what done. And this are what we are doing. The people are not crazy. But when you say, I know there is no job. I know that there is insecurity. But if you stop willing, you uh -huh. just go and get another job. Can you imagine? Is that seriously? I feel offended. Though. <laughs> is that communication? Why would you feel offended in a nation where the minimum <laughs> wage is supposed to be thirty thousand naira? That buys a bag of rice, and then you drink water to the rice. <laughs> and then somebody tells you, you you're wailing. Like a drum. Exactly. And then somebody true. tells you you're wailing when you say there's insecurity, when you say there's police brutality. Let the me pause and let you can. The, thing, take I, the, the way I look at it is if you talk to a pin, how do you expect him to talk when say? all he does is market prostitutes? So if you talk to the spokesperson of a president who does not have presidential capabilities and whatever. What do you expect such a spokesperson to be? Sure. That's exactly what he we're seeing He won't be now. the first so, spokesperson, The, the spokesperson though. should be amenable. Abby? You should no, cover the tracks of that your principal. A spokesperson to a president like the one we have yeah. cannot in any way be a spokesperson you'll be proud of because are you proud of your president? No, but if the president is not presidential, for instance, mm -hmm. you want to hire yeah. a spokesperson that will represent you well. Yeah. So you don't even well, have you, to talk. They're going to sit down. They're correct. Go and try and sell go uh, forward for you. <laughs> go and try and sell a shower now with a good language and see how far you will go. <laughs>
It's just so unfortunate. It's just so unfortunate. talking about the new year. Extreme example. Jumoke, you you were talking about the new year speech. We are tired of lifeless speeches. Yeah. And this is not about whether you're a healer or a whaler. This is this is an objective. As a matter of fact, I think speech have a reputation. I think the president speech have a reputation of trader money and market money. I know. Nobody wants to get trader money. Look forward to ah. that speech at all. But unfortunately, I was in a studio <laughs> at 7 o'clock on that day. So I was forced to listen to it. It was a nice speech. But the yeah. problem is not about good speeches. For example, you have a speech that accepted that he has not done well in security, in uh, economy, and in anti-corruption fights. That is well, a good thing. Well, he said it was a past administration you know, that didn't do it. That was that's what was said in that particular well, well, in it, that it, So, but, but the question is, so after saying, I have not done well enough, so... Are you resigning? What are the action the, the plans? Next thing, no, the the action plan. Plan. Then we leave it down. There was no, it was it not done. a speech that gave anybody so hope. Not, yeah. Like all the old ones. Like the old ones. Please. Please. We're not sorry. We didn't watch <laughs> we or or listen. I am not or sorry. Or analyze. Uh, there's a reason we are not watching, we are not listening. <laughs> are you one of uh, those who thinks COVID-19 is a hoax? Well, you should listen to Gola Ahon's advocacy. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. When the call first came in, I was ashamed to pick it. I couldn't believe I omitted to touch base with some of my friends during this past Yuletide. And she was one of them. The call came again. And this time, I picked. And she told me the story of the past few weeks of her life. She had some malaria-like symptoms, feverish feelings, and body aches. So she went to the hospital, and the doctor decided to do a malaria test which came out negative. However, because she was deeply involved in a close relative's wedding arrangement, she shoved the feverish feelings aside and trudged on. But as the feverish symptoms refused to go away, she found herself in the hospital again. And this time, the doctor suggested she take the COVID-19 test. It came out positive. But even before the result came out, she found herself already on admission with poor oxygen saturation. She spent the next 10 days on oxygen. And she wasn't even conscious enough to know it. At the end of the 10th day, she had to start learning to sit up. And took, it took many more days for her to start learning to walk again. This is a 40-something-year-old person learning to walk all over again. COVID-19 is not a scam or scheme. It is not a joke. It is not some conspiracy theories. It is real. A killer virus that is currently ravaging the world in a second wave. In the last two weeks alone, two prominent old students of my secondary school died from COVID-19 related complications. It is such a shame that even as of today, there are still people who think COVID does not exist. There are all sorts of conspiracy theories about how Big Gates wants to depopulate the world and had colluded with China to bring up this COVID story. Some said it was created for economic reasons so that investors in vaccine companies could make money. A popular televangelist said it was caused by 5G technology. Some said it was the new world order that will lead to the emergence of the Antichrist. Others said the Democrats were behind it to discredit Trump. Yet, others said it exists, but it's not in Nigeria because our weather is special or we are generally a stronger species of homo sapiens. We can go on and on, but let me tell you with all sense of responsibility, COVID is real. It is a killer. And guess what? Just like we crossed over into this new year, COVID also did. And the second wave is worse in Nigeria. Here is it. While I agree that there have been many questions left unanswered about the COVID phenomenon, there is one thing that is not in doubt. There is a virus called COVID-19 ravaging the world. I wish to advocate that we take more seriously the non-pharmaceutical measures of social distancing, wearing of masks, and hand hygiene. 
it is the minimum we can do as responsible citizens to preserve our own health and those of others. This COVID season shall pass. I still want to be here when it is all over. Mm. I know you want to be too. Do your part. I will. Do your part. And doing your part means being responsible mm. enough to stay at home if you don't have to go Correct. out. The first wave taught us how to work from home. True. You're not proving anything by going to the office. Already the state governments have said, you know, from level this to level this, mm. stay at home and work from home. Mm. We saw, we survived the first wave. Yes. But we're, we're seeing more deaths seemingly the with wave. the second wave because we're, we're, we're taking we're it. We're more like, like a desiccal. Yeah, right? we're like a desiccal. Well, it's killing all the elites. Well, it's their, it's their <laughs> disease. No, it's not a disease it's for the, disease the elites. The rich. We hear about the elites because they're popular, they're True. important Correct. people. True. That's right. why we know when they pass on. There are a lot of everyday, ordinary people dying that we don't know about. True. So be responsible. That party can wait. I wanted to go to the movies during the holidays. Then I thought to myself, it's a, it's a, it's a so public it's place. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of social distancing will be there? Why don't I just stay at home and watch Netflix? Or just, just watch myself? <laughs> <laughs> why, why, I agree you know? with, why I agree with your position, I also feel that um, we should allow these COVID-19 commentaries and analysis to come from professionals and scientists in terms of how the disease the nature of the disease and its future. Yes, because so we, have, we, have a, we have a situation where we have a lot of illusionists. Uh, we have a lot of clergymen dumbling into this whole thing, mystifying it, mm. concocting it mm. with relating to fear. end time mm. and uh, the rest of it, and then creating a lot of fear mm. okay, sure. in people who we have to give up certain material things in order for them to find <laughs> solace yeah. with their creator. So I, I'm, I'm begging people who do not understand, who, if you are not a virologist, you are not a scientist, you do not understand medical science or you are not a medical doctor, we should not keep telling people about the way the disease operates. Let's stop allow professionals. What you don't yes, know. Yes, stop spreading what you don't Let the professionals do it. What you can do is to take the measures. Use your face masks, you know, you know, wash your hands, stay indoors, stay away from people, don't go to crowded places, things like that are things we should maintain. But as to mystifying it and then creating some some issues about it. It is so it is so painful that in Nigeria we abuse this freedom of speech. It's not just Nigerians. No, I think the government of Nigeria of also has a role. It has a role to play. You can't say Keep social distances, wear your mask, and then tell us to go and register for new. Uh -huh. That is a uh -huh. different story again. Uh -huh. Do you understand? So you negate strategy? what you're telling us to do. You to tell do. us, yeah. and then you give us two weeks to do it. Okay, very well, they've extended it, but what's, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. We're all still scrambling to mm -hmm. get our name done. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the places crowded. People are on a queue. I see, I've seen images and images of people on the queue for NIM. They're not wearing masks. They're not keeping social my distance. Friend calls and nobody's it, enforcing it there. My, friend, my friend calls it the arrogance of the elites because we see um, parties being held every other weekend. And Look who at the are the people during the festive season? Who are the people who can afford to pay for these event centers? They're the elites. The oh. people who ought to set the example for their security man, driver, you know, um, household um, staff, you know, to follow suit, are the ones who believe that because maybe I can do... They're powerful people. Maybe I can do mm -hmm. COVID tests, so, you know, it won't affect me. But I'm very interested in your friend's story because the doctor should have, with what has been happening around the world, mm -hmm. suspected yeah. COVID the first time she came with malaria symptoms. You know. Exactly. I yeah. mean, how do you but, allow somebody... But before COVID, we've always had malaria. No, but within <laughs> the last one year, somebody comes to you with malaria symptoms. If you tell me that you have malaria now, the first thing that crosses my mind is COVID. Yeah. Chuka. True. Mm, but should it be that uh, then of course we have radical? We, we have to try and um, stop people who should know better from spreading, you know, this sort of um, COVID-19 is a scam thing. Look at the governor of Kogi State. That man is a disgrace. What's his name? Yahaya Bello. Have you have you, you must have watched his own yeah. take on COVID-19. No COVID. He said there's no COVID. 
He is a disgrace to this country, to his state. I mean, he's a jackass. Is, Frankly, is, is contesting for presidency. Yes, yeah, so his people are begging. Be careful him. how you talk to our next president. candidate. It's not our <laughs> next <laughs> president. Chuka will not agree with you that he can lead the country. You will be surprised. He may, he may win 2023 presidential election. <laughs> No, he can if Bukhari is. So, I mean, come on. I mean, Anyone can. anything can happen in Nigeria. There yeah. you go. Like the book written by Lola Shone, Baba Shegi's Wives. Social media went agog with a paternity story which had many of us asking questions. Over to you, Chuka. Today, I'll be talking about Doubting Thomas. Now, let me quote, the woman committed the paternity cheat, not the man. He did not force her. It's with her consent. Yes, the man has a moral weakness, but the woman allowed this to happen. Kindly excuse that poor grammar, but that above comment is from answers to an article regarding the now trending matter of the amorous liaison between Adam Nuru, who is the managing director of MC FCMB and a former married employee of the bank, Moyo Thomas. Mrs. Thomas apparently admitted to her husband some months ago that their two children were fathered by Nuru. Mr. Thomas apparently went into depression and has died. Now, I'm fascinated negatively, of course, by the comment I've just read out. How does anyone get to thinking like that? I mean, what could be so wrong with society that anyone could be so stupid, ignorant, and even evil? I'll tell you what. I actually, I actually could guess that the writer is capable of rape and abuse of women. Now, there are sins that appear simple to understand, but not to normalize. But a woman bearing children from one man and passing on to another, unsuspecting one, has to be one of the lowest of lows of crime I can think of. How could a normal, healthy individual live with this, or even have done it in the first place? There's a case here for mental instability. I have all my life wondered how men deny their own children for convenience, leaving a lady in shame and confusion. And as a young boy, I could not have foreseen that a woman would be capable of what we now face. And it's apparently rampant. A year or so ago, I posted statistics on Facebook that over a third of cases like these were Nigerian, only a little less than Jamaica. And the women rushed to either defend the action as retaliation for allegedly rampant male infidelity or as one of those things. I was shocked. They also claimed the statistics were untrue and made up by Western media. If indeed Mr. Thomas became depressed, I'm not surprised. If this crime is only possible from a mentally unstable woman, it stands to reason that the affected man would be badly hit. Why do things happen? Why do these things happen? Some say they would do it for, you know, if their husband is unable to successfully impregnate them. But not to tell him, I've not even wrapped my head around a man asking another to impregnate his wife on his behalf. We live in interesting and perilous times where mad is sane and man is woman. Perhaps these acts have been rampant for a long time and only just been outed in these times where technology really does expose a lot. With no DNA tests centuries ago, these sorts of matters would have gone unchecked and unrecorded. There are times when even our own African tradition allow for situations where children are adopted by a couple when the wife or girlfriend trees and has a child and these cases are settled and life goes on. However, I think it is time to make DNA testing a part of postnatal care, a necessary procedure and a part of the process of obtaining a birth certificate. If the father is unknown, so be it. Personally, I don't see any chaste woman contesting this. It may even nail some irresponsible men who do not want to accept responsibility for their own children. And this will all be more useful than legalizing child rights. But for this trending matter, the jury is out on the acceptability or otherwise of this practice. But the shock value still points to widespread disapproval. Personally, I have little or no respect for Mrs. Thomas, except, of course, this is all just a ruse, a sick one. But no woman should be called a slut until we find an alternative name for men who sleep around.
Is that justifying? Because no, no, no. I'm not, it's not justifying anything. Because when this news broke out, I was on social media and I saw the comments. People are vilifying unnecessary women unnecessarily because of a case, just a case of infidelity. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it is the other way around, society tends to want to accept that the man can go out and do yeah, whatsoever, that men are but that the woman. Uh -huh. The woman was maintain that mm, enclave. That one lane. Who says that? Okay. If the woman mm. is vilified, vilify okay, men also. Vilify men also. Balance it, and okay. then let us have a sane society. Barrister Evans, I love it that it is a man who is advocating on behalf of women. Yes. But a popular contraceptive did a survey, yes. and in 2012. 2014, mm -hmm. 2015, 2019, mm -hmm. Nigerian women came tops mm -hmm. in the most unfaithful wives across the world. With 62%, Thailand trade behind us with 59%, Malaysian women with 39%, Russian women with um, 33%, and Singaporeans with 19%. And Every year when this survey comes out, Nigerian women keep on, you know, denying, oh, it's not true, it's not true. What are the parameters for this survey? The Who empirical was analysis. So they asked, to... they asked women, and women justify it by saying that we, particularly in Nigeria, we're in a patriarchal society where men are polygamous. And once we decided to go monogamous, one man to one wife, Men now marry one, but and still then, have many side chicks on the side. Mm -hmm. Like, this is our story now. It was is, that not, is that not injustice? Let, let me quickly chip in here. Uh, we started with the reference to uh, Lola Shunei's book, yes. uh, Baba, Baba Shegi's, Shegi's Wives. Wife. What's Shegi's the story? The story, story is that Baba Shegi could not get his wives pregnant. pregnant. The first wife knew about it, brought a child from wherever, got pregnant by somebody, and then each time he, he brought... Others. He tutored others. So this time he said he wants to get, bring somebody again. Before to wife. try it. They now <laughs> brought <laughs> the educated Your one. secret would be... No, because the first three that. wives were illiterate. The fourth right. wife was, was educated. An educated woman. And so they couldn't, you know, tell her... Ah, the the, the same way so, they have manipulated the year. Mm. So they said to themselves, don't worry, after two years of her not she getting better, she will know how to, how to arrange Now, this herself. is the point, and it's a very sensitive one. Mm. I will not condone a woman to go get impregnated by somebody else out, outside and come pin it on your husband. I will not do that. But you see, the ego, our men in Nigeria, for instance, mm -hmm. for, for, for that matter, should learn to puncture their own ego by themselves. Yeah. If you're not fertile, if you have an issue with yourself, tell your spouse. And stop acting How like you're, know? you're the best. You will know. A lot of them don't go. Be you will know. Then. Because the, the thinking is once there is a couple not having children after three, the five years, the is tradition is that it, it's always the woman. And it's wrong. Most times from what we're seeing, it's not the woman. Yeah, and who it, are it, you it, to say, there is nothing wrong with me, it must be my husband. You can't say it. Can't so say. a lot of these women will go out and do what they need to do. Then tomorrow the child is looking like yeah, But it's beginning the to neighbor. look as if it's a justification. It's not a justification. But because, you see, mm. we must re, re, re calibrate ourselves as a society yeah, right, and stop victimizing women. Mm. If we, women can, if your wife can open up to you and both of you can say, you see now we have a problem. I love you so much. I don't want to do this. What do we do? Adoption. Let us adopt. Let us look for solutions. But in the case where you're the one pumping up and feeling that, you see, no, I'm going to marry a second I wife. I disagree or, totally. You know why? Yeah. Patriarchy is perpetrated by women. Most times, it is the mother-in-law who is saying, no, my, uh, my son is okay. That's just one factor. That's my, just one factor. It's just one of the factors. You are, you are, you are clouting it true. But we I must say, say what it means is that, that we must who, calibrate, recalibrate ourselves as a society. I, 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 I get what you're saying. We must. Um, we must be able to have those difficult discussions. Uh -uh. So it is not always the woman that has a problem when there is a, 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 case, of a case of infertility. As a matter of fact, they are equally liable mm. to having those, those, those circumstances. And it shouldn't always be about the, uh, about the lady. Having said that, the specific issue of the FCMB 
whatever. We may not have the details. So we I, do I believe not have the details. I believe yeah. we are it's just, just talking generally. Even talking outside, uh -huh. of, it. talking outside of it. We're talking outside of it. Now I've also seen a few statistics like the like, like the one you brought up. But the truth is, I'm I'm afraid of those numbers Why? because unless How unless I counted? know the sample size, the sampling technique, and all those, and see the analysis, the I don't know what you're talking about. The, the so evidence. in the case of the U.S., for example, it is possible because the U.S. when you're having applying for an immigration visa, they request that your children undergo DNA. DNA so they have a database based on just the people who apply for immigration visa. Okay. So they can make a projection mm. based on that. And there but are lots of homes that have been broken yes. through yes. that process so, yes. but we, before we, we, this we FCMB1. Start getting real. Well, my, 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 position real is that, my position on, is on that uh, at the risk of not being seen as someone justifying this, is that if you know as a woman that the children you have is not for your husband, mm -hmm. please... Don't, the discussion. don't don't say it belongs don't to the man. Ah. Don't cover it. Mm. Don't stay under any shade of whatsoever. Because as much as those are extremely no, no, difficult, ah, no, I'm, I'm, so easy easy easy. Easy. I'm saying it because extremely no way. Easy. I'm saying it because I started it out. It's easier not to just people do uh, it. Excuse me. I started that by saying, you see, there are certain things you cannot stop. Do you understand? You can only say that people should not. Why don't you get to, out of that relationship? Going to issues that like is what that. Yeah, but you cannot just stop get out of it. it. <laughs> there exactly. are people who likes that kind of lifestyle. Which to kind to of live lifestyle? in denial. I mean, to 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 involve so in. So people uh, don't like to tell, to if, like the truth. Fidelity and then hide it and keep hiding it until the whole place is. Oh, uh, in Baba Segi's case, when he found out that all the children were not his own, what did he do? He hid it. He did too. Benny. Hmm. Because, because of his own ego. His own shame. His yes, own, now. Yes, so how, his own how these children that he had trained, how will you now say that he cannot father a child? Let me quickly add that. I like that this FCMB saga, you know, came to the fore. Whether it's true or not, we don't know. Whether it's a corporate uh, warfare against uh, FCMB, we warfare. do not know. FCMB but this is what I know I for sure, that this sort of thing... Um, happens in it's, banks. It's, it's and I've seen a tweet where somebody said, don't stop with FCMB. Come to this bank and come to this bank with specific names. So for me, yeah, as I an advocate that. for women... Are you saying women, it doesn't happen in the civil service? <coughs> no, no, no. Or no, no, it's no, not in the military? Allow me to make my point. Allow me to make my point. The points I'm making... The point I'm making is there is sexual exploitation in the workplace. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And it's about time that we turned our such light on it and begin to save women and men because some it happens to boss men. women it also do it to, yeah. their, to their subordinates. The thing is, if it's in your policy, and in fact, it's even part of corporate governance, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. So just as this whistleblower on Twitter or whether Facebook has said, let's turn the such light on Things like this is mm. not only FCMB. If yeah, it Chuka, indeed, Chuka, I want to say something now. No, I just I agree with um, with uh, Treasure because somebody mentioned <laughs> somebody mentioned GD in exactly. GT Bank. Thank so you. I went to GT Bank's board of directors to check who was called GD, and I saw the person. Ah. So this matter, yes. yeah. Honestly, um, well, maybe it was a longer name like Babaji Day, but I saw it and I thought, wow, this is, you know. There was but, another bank mentioned. And then and another the bank was mentioned, mentioned, but it wasn't as clear as the GD one was. Mm. So, oh, hold on a minute, um, though. But, you people are disputing the survey conducted by contraceptive I don't dispute companies. it, too. Jumaka, I'm with no, you. I, 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 let Chuka finish making his point. Let Chuka finish making his point. I agree with Jumaka. That survey, I accept it. I accept the one that I saw. And I think that those who don't want to accept it are the same as these women I, or I, men I, who I deny their children. I do and the women who are like asking them. for more evidence. So that is fair. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot just swallow it. Okay, we we need evidence. Like that. We need to no, know the parameters no. they use because we know how these people behave. They Which survey. people? No. We want to know. No, no. <laughs> they asked Nigerian women that, that were married, and because mm. they were anonymous. Mm. You didn't have to write your name exactly. in the survey. Yeah. They were able to yeah. tell the truth. Yeah. And a lot of them had reasons like, oh, my husband does not satisfy me. Oh, my husband cannot actually produce a child. Mm. You know, things mm -hmm. like that. Oh, I want to cover my husband's shame. Mm. There's a pastor's Helping wife who said husband. that 
you know, the husband had been married before, no children, and married her a but young lady. Did you get my consent to help me? No, uh, no. Did you even <laughs> did you disclose no, family, that you had a problem? The family members were saying to the wife, the pastor's wife, that better go out. This is what happened to the former wife. Oh, mm. once she left the pastor, <laughs> that one had a child. Better go out and go and arrange yourself. Oh, can you mm. imagine? Mm. So, in fact, some of the families even you know support and encourage it in Nigeria because so it's, then, it's more a shame. Not to have a child than than to if, actually if, be even without that children. one. We need to begin to question it. But some of Why this, should it be a shame? Some of, some of this cancel us. Have a you see, if we have to hold women responsible Why? for thank all you, this, Bolano. Thank you very we much. We should also Excellent. hold thank the cancelers responsible. There are people. It's who a shame to not be married in Nigeria. Uh, Why? It's a shame to not have I'm children in Nigeria. Why? It's a shame to, to be married and not be married again Marriage in is not compulsory. We need to recalibrate what our values I'm are. Damn, I agree. Oh. It's not compulsory that you must have a child. It's not compulsory that you must be married. If you want it's a child optional. and you cannot have one, you must there not... Are many you, children you waiting for adoption. God did not say you must alter the population continuously. All right, there. we could go on and on. Finally, it's time to draw the curtains of this week's episode of The Advocates. Isn't it interesting? Well, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you can go to plus TV Africa.com slash the advocate NG. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. Until next week, when we come your way again with five different issues. It's bye-bye from us. Wishing you a beautiful new year. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.